Previously on Taken. My name is Jesse Keys. I have encounters with unidentified flying objects. Get away from me! Jesse, what happened? There was one survivor of the crash. Tracked him down to a small town in Texas. He had formed a bond there with a young woman. And years later, I went back to that town. She had two grown children, and she also had a 10-year-old son. Kids, this is Owen Crawford. Jacob! This guy broke her heart. My life is not going to be complete until I ruin his. You know too much about what I do. <laughs> well, Eric. Your dad had me get him a car from the motor pool the night your mother was murdered. When he returned it, there were 417 new miles on it. 417 miles is the exact distance round trip between Groom Lake and the spot where Howard and your mother were found. They were both killed with Howard's service pistol. He lost that pistol two days before he died. I remember him asking me if I'd seen it. He said he'd left it in his desk drawer and it just disappeared. She was drinking a lot, threatening to expose his work. I'm sorry, Eric. I've been carrying it around with me all this time. Now that your father's dead, I thought you should know. My father was a vicious, selfish man. He put his own personal aggrandizement above the good of his country. In my opinion, his egomania made him a liability to the project. However, he was also incredibly meticulous. He kept files on everything. This one's interesting, Doctor. Your signature on the autopsy reports from the three bodies recovered from the Roswell crash, and a fourth, the one who died while he was under observation. Two copies of the crash site reports, the real one and the cover-up. General, your signature's on both. An interesting one on the disposal of the bodies of twin psychics used in some early research into the nature of the technology. This one's particularly informative. It's a briefing on the Roswell events that you and your colleagues prepared for General Eisenhower just before he took office. On page two, you'll find a list of the 12 of you who worked on the briefing. Very impressive group. These are copies, of course. The originals are in a safe place. So what do you want? Commander. What's going on here, Eric? I checked the motor pool records for the night my mother was killed. You did check that car out. That makes you an accomplice, Marty, an accessory before the fact. These men will hand you over to civilian authorities in Carson City. I'm sure your fear of my father will be taken into account. And you'll be stepping up to take over the project. Corn doesn't fall too far, does it, Eric? I need that funding shifted over to biological research, Ted. Find the resources. Why is it so important? None of your damn business, Ted. Ted, do your job or lose it. Some people spend their lives hoping for something to happen that will change everything. They look for power or love or the answers to their biggest questions. I think really what they're looking for is another chance. Some way to lead another life where all the mistakes they've made would be erased and they could just start over. Nothing bad has happened yet and all their possibilities are still in front of them. Sorry I'm late. I'm proud of tourists. We ought to put up a gift shop, sell little bobbing alien heads or something. I had our people take the test subjects out across the desert to avoid them. I can't run an operation under these conditions. It's a joke. So 
Since I talked the general into letting me run this project, it's become a damn circus. Yeah, but if you're gonna be a damn circus, best to be in the center ring. What have you got? Well, what are you doing? These fell out of the heads of a half a dozen brain tumor patients we've been monitoring for the past couple of years. Call so out and put them away. Yeah, don't worry, they're dead. They're like batteries, they're just not transmitting. We had to open up a half a dozen people before we got a live one. It's kind of like looking for pearls. You got a live implant? Okay, let's check this out. This is really amazing. Send in the soldier. People come home for a lot of reasons. They come home to remember. They come home because they've got no place else to go. They come home when they're beaten. They come home when they're proud. They come home looking for a door out into their past or a road out into their future. They come home for a lot of reasons, but they always come home to say goodbye. Remembered? Yeah, exactly. Doesn't change much, does it? There they are. Hey. <laughs> Mom's just waking up. I'm glad you guys came. My mom really wanted to get a look at Lisa. Say that we're lucky because it's taking her so quick. With cancer, it could have been a lot worse. Oh, honey. <laughs> How you like this, huh? Lord, they tell me it's a cigarette, but. I don't think I'd live this long without them. <laughs> you grew up real nice. How you doing? I'm good, Mom. Yeah, I see that. That's fine. Tom? Yeah? Come on in. Mom, this is Carol, my wife. Hi, oh, Carol. How you doing? Pleasure to meet you. And this is 
is Lisa. Don't. Come here, take this thing out of my nose so I don't look so scared of that child. <coughs> Come here, darling. Let me get a look at you. Come on, honey. It's okay. Hello, Grandma. You're a pretty girl. She's got your father's eyes. Jake, I know who your dad was. The government was doing these experiments. This is all Freedom of Information Act stuff. It was the beginning of the Cold War. And people were scared and willing to do anything, so they took these soldiers Filled them with psychotropic drugs to see what happened. And I believe that your dad was one of those soldiers. When he escaped from the army base at Roswell, Owen Crawford tried to get him back. Hmm. It might be a little bit more complicated than that. About your abilities. Well, I think you got them from your father. But whatever the drugs had done to him, you know, like those women who took thalidomide, I think that they're taking civilians now. Doing the same experiments, mind control, or processing, whatever you want to call it, to make them think that they're being abducted by aliens. And you know that this is not the case? Well, the government makes them think that, but it's their cover story, Jake. For a cover story, it seems a little bit far-fetched, doesn't it? Mom's in a lot of pain. Morphine doesn't seem to be helping. It's okay, Mom. It's okay. It's okay. Let's help you up, Mom. Okay. Jacob, it's time for me to go, honey. Jake. Something for mom. It's all right, Tom. I don't want to believe this, Jake. You never wanted to. You always kind of did, though. <clears throat> right from when John came and you saw the lights. That's why all those years you tried so hard to prove that it was a conspiracy, a lie. Those are easier things to believe in. That's kind of ironic, though, don't you think? No, the country's leading debunker turns out to have a half alien half brother. What are you going to do now? I want you to come forward, Jake. I can't do that, Tom. You're talking about something that the entire world has a right to know. You were the proof that it happened, Jake. What do you want me to do? Go on TV? Bend some spoons. We turn into a freak show in a minute and a half, and you know it. Then at least people would know that it really happened. Would they?
Why did they come, Jake? What do they want? I don't know. I do know that I'm not the only one who's special to them. It's a feeling I get sometimes that there is someone else. They're playing catch up, the government. They're trying to figure out the same things you asked me, why they came, what they want. Owen Crawford knew about me. If they're not already doing it, they're going to try and find that other person. Jesse Keys, one of my father's many failures. Not to speak ill of the dead, though, right? He kills this guy's father, then loses him. I'd say, all in all, he screwed that one up. Yeah, he couldn't have known what would happen when they took out Russell Key's implant, but if it makes you feel better to think that your old man screwed up... And this one, Jesse? He mattered to them. He was important. And we grab these people, we pop the implants out of their heads, we, we even kill some of them. They're our little gray friends, don't do squat. And this guy. I pulled him right through the wall of a bomb shelter to take him away from us. Uh, I don't think you can lay that one on your father either. What do you think it all means? Maybe nothing. Could be there's some they chew on repeatedly and others they spit out after just one bite. Uh, now that we're looking more into the genetics, we'll figure it out. We're really close. What about those brothers in Alaska? Failed attempts at crossbreeding. Well, like that kid, Jacob Clark, your old man tried to bring back from Texas. Jacob Clark dies. And we all know what happened to the furry freak brothers. You see what they're doing, don't you? Everything they can. This is an FBI aging program. If some fugitive goes underground for 10 years, they want to make sure they'll know him if they see him. And I'll leave you diamonds to donuts. This Jesse Keys is still alive. You want to find out what's so important about him? Maybe we should ask him. Truck 8. Yeah. Chief, we've got one over at Morgan's Junction. Car full of college kids. It's pretty ugly. Paramedics on the scene. We've also got a tractor injury in Sutter's and a kid pulled out of Hodgkin's Creek. Paramedics at both. I'll take the car. On the way home from Milton, drunk, lost control of the car, flipped it. Uh, driver was killed instantly. Two boys in the back, pretty banged up. They're on their way to county, and a uh, girl in the passenger seat's a uh, spinal. We're just getting her out now. Light. saw this light in the sky, and then. Oh. 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 My friends. They've been taken to the hospital. Kevin. Hey, hey, can you do something for me? Can you keep your head straight and follow my pen with your eyes? Good. Now, we're going to have you out of here in just a minute, OK? But can you just keep your head straight and keep your eyes where my pen was? All right, can you do that for me? <laughs> Bobby. I'm sorry, Chief. I'm sorry. My first accident, I uh, puked all over my chief's shoes. Don't get any ideas. Look, you know what I love about this job? You come to a scene, you look at it, you assess the situation, and your job is to make it better. You can do that, no matter how bad it is. You can always make it better. Not for that guy who's driving, not for him. Then you move on. That's what it's all about. You find someone you can help. Here. Make sure she stares straight ahead. Don't let her look at the blood on the windshield, OK? Yes, Chief.
can't believe you're still out here. Look, this is all my fault. The other guys thought you were with me. I thought you got a ride back to the hospital with the sheriff's guys. How long have I been out here? Uh, two and a half, three hours. Look, I'm really sorry, Chief. I don't know what else to say. Hey, Dad. Hey, Charlie. Do you know that 12 people have gone to the moon? Some people put a lot of work into their lawn, as if a patch of green grass was the most important thing in the world. As if they thought that as long as the lawn out front was green and mowed and beautiful, it wouldn't matter at all what was going on inside the house. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Hey, let's get this place cleaned up before Mom gets home, okay? Okay. Dad said he's gonna come see my play. Yeah, I'm sure he will, honey. Can you help me with my costume? Yeah, sure. Mom? Is Dad all right? Yeah, of course he is. What do you mean? I don't know. It's just... He seems like he's scared of something. known your father a long time. There's one thing I know about him. He's not afraid of anything. Hi, kiddo. Right there, Ace. Hey, I know you. I'm Luke Reynolds. Luke Reynolds, you pulled my son Mo out of our sweep auger last year. So what the hell are you doing out here? Ah, oh, you come to look at my lower field. Lower field? My glow-in-the-dark wheat. <laughs> come on. that a bitch? There was an accident out here today. Yep, pretty bad one. Had the field been glowing before the accident? Nope. Started right after that. It's a shape that it gets me, though. I mean, look at it. Looks like a damn flying saucer. This hostage thing just shows you what happens when you let your enemies see your weakness. We should have gone in there the moment they were taken and gotten them back at any cost. Miss Fox says if we'd done that, they might have killed the hostages. Maybe, but they would have been less likely to do it again. Can we talk about something else? How would you like to move? Like to Henderson, someplace a little further outside of town? 
No, I was thinking more like me. Don't you think this is a little sudden? Dad, is this because there's flying saucers in Maine? Because Dylan Peters said that you were the flying saucer soldier and that you were in charge of all of it. No, I don't think it's too sudden at all. Do you know the feeling of daring yourself to walk across a dark room? That way you're excited because you know, you really do know, that there's nothing there to hurt you. Some people get to choose their dark rooms. They get to look for places where the fear is only skin deep. But some people are nowhere near that lucky. after they pulled me out of the temple in Vietnam, they stopped. I'd think about them once in a while, but I'd convince myself that the stuff that had happened with my dad when I was younger and in the jungle had just all been in my mind. These are the guardian angels you told me about. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I call them angels, but they were the reason why I did a lot of what I did back there, you know. I did some pretty crazy things just to see if, you know, they would save me. And they did. Every single time. <sighs> Honey, yeah, maybe it is all in your mind. I mean, you're more than due for some post-traumatic stress. Look at this. You don't say it. Say what? The rash. Shaped like a hand. We've been through a lot, you and I, yeah? And we're gonna get through this just like all the rest. Jesse, I want you to see someone for me. You owe me that much. D just see someone. They'll just tell me I have a tumor. That's not necessarily what they're gonna say. I was diagnosed with a brain tumor when I was 16. My father died of one. Okay, then you really do need to see someone. There is something in my head. It's no tumor, though. It's something they put there. Something that tells them... For God's sake, Jesse, would you listen to yourself? Look, honey, see someone. If you won't do it for me, do it for Charlie. a small tumor in the front of my brain, no bigger than the tip of lead pencil. I talked to Amelia. She told me you've been behaving strangely. The tumor is very small. There's no sign of a fluid buildup, but still it could explain your recent behavior. Dr. Franklin Traub. He's the best brain tumor man in the country. He's at the Rivers Clinic in St. Paul. I just spoke to him. You have an appointment tomorrow. Thanks. Um... Any commonality in the in the stories? Well, I think the, the first thing that you want to remember, you and everyone at home, is that these are normal people, just like you and me, with no history of psychosis or schizophrenia, no mental illness. They're normal people talking about something that has really happened to them. The, the striking thing is how similar all of the stories are. 
the, the he always feels comfortable in a crowd. Mm. Any minute, he's going to start doing card tricks. I always knew, Jay. I always did. But I never thought that contact your mom was building out in the garage was going to get your father's attention. She needed a better power supply with an impedance-matched output coupling. <laughs> You can sit around here all afternoon reminiscing or help clean out the garage. You allowed my brother's gonna ride both sides of this alien thing all the way to the bank. Kim, Andy, you're done playing. We got work to do. Uncle Ronnie, just because you're jealous that Aunt Becky's spending time with my dad is no reason to yell at Kim and Andy. It's not going to make the fact that Uncle Tom's getting a lot of attention go away either. Bottom line is that if you're of interest to the aliens, you're also of interest to the government. She is your daughter, isn't she? Uh, Mr. Clark, I, I uh, don't mean to question your ability or your expertise, but I, I have to point out here that up until very recently, you were one of the leading debunkers of this entire phenomenon. So we'd all like to know what changed your mind. I have personal information. You were taken? No, no, that's not what I now, said. There's a story that we'd all like to hear. Well, I'm not at liberty to say. Hold on, hold on, folks. You have evidence of an alien being here on Earth and you're not sharing? Mr. Clark, I find that hardly fair. I think more than anything else, we'd all like to know what changed your mind. We'll take a break. You're right, that thing in your brain is no tumor. It's very small, it looks metallic. Where did you grow up, Illinois? Any exposure to chemicals? <laughs> Heroin. You say your father had a similar tumor? Yeah, identical. We see these deposits occasionally in people who work with unusual chemicals, chelated heavy metals, things like that. Sometimes they occur for no obvious reason, and usually they're mistaken for tumors, but in actual fact, it's just foreign matter that's got swept up into a little pile that the body doesn't know how to get rid of. Now, the important thing is, we can treat this without surgery. We can use localized ultrasound therapy, get this thing to break out and dissolve. You'll pass it in a matter of days. <laughs> no, no surgery. <laughs> that, that's great. <laughs> Must be disconcerting to wake up one morning and your whole world's changed. Yeah, for me, it was uh, more like my whole world had come back. So this happened before? Yeah, when, uh, when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, and then uh, again in Vietnam. Well, if you're prone to this sort of thing, it's not surprising it's going to reoccur. Could it be affecting Jesse mentally? It's possible, yes. You've been having problems? Uh, yeah, but I, I think that if you can get this thing out of my head, then it'll make them go away. <laughs> Leon, thanks, Kevin. It's going to be all right, Jesse. You know, when I was a kid, the time I told you about when I saw my dad, I was uh, locked up in a bomb shelter on an Air Force base. There are people involved in this, too. Very vicious people. Jesse, uh, Jesse, you're going to be all I right. This is all going to go away. The rest of it, but you have to believe this. I was taken, locked up by some people involved with the Air Force. And they, uh, I, I got away, joined the army under a fake name. Now, I don't, I don't know if they stopped looking for me, but uh, now that this is all started again, just keep it in mind. Okay. Hey. Remember our list of all the things I said I explained one day? Aren't you, uh, glad I waited as long as I did? Hey, that's a pretty good book. Yeah, I don't read much. 
Well, living place is far too much importance on death, in my way of thinking, but at least it makes it funny. Thanks, good. Jesse, you don't believe you've got a metallic deposit in your hand, do you? You have your thoughts about what I have in my head, and I have mine. Do you want to share your thoughts with me? No, I, I'd rather not. Why are you here if you don't believe I can help you? <laughs> no. You have to help me. You say you can make this thing in my head dissolve. That's what I want. I don't even care what it is. I have a nine-year-old son, and I almost hurt him because of this thing in my head. I don't care about anything else. I don't care about anything else at all. Hello, Dr. Wakeman, please. Traub here, Rivers Clinic. I got the man you're looking for. Dad went crazy when he ran out of the house screaming. Your dad's nuts. Now they've locked him up. That's <laughs> enough, all of you. Now, Charlie's dad is sick. It's very serious. He's gone away to get well. We're praying for him. Sorry. <laughs> Hope your dad gets better. Yeah. So we're going down to the Lemkes. I hear they have a wicked haunted house. You want to come? No more fighting? I promise. All right, kiddo. Have a good time. They're so forgiving, children. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to butt in. I was just out enjoying the evening. Oh, I'm glad you were here. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear about your husband. I hope he'll be all right. Thanks. Yes, I'll hold. Hi, honey. How are you? Lonely. How's Halloween? It's great. Charlie starts later. I really just called because I wanted to hear your voice. When everything in your life is right on track, it's easy to believe that things happen for a reason. It's easy to have faith. But when things start to go wrong, then it's very hard to hold on to that faith. It's hard not to wonder whose reasons these things happen for. How long are you gonna keep from under? Well, a couple of hours. Let him think we did a full workup. What do you think these marks on his chest are? Looks almost like a hand. Maybe he fought back. So what do you want to do with him? Take that thing out of his head? No, they're dime a dozen. I don't want the implant. I want him. He believes they've saved him repeatedly. In Vietnam, other places. They probably did. That's Jesse Keyes. He's extremely important to them. OK, what do we know? They're working towards something, but what? Do they want to destroy the planet that save us from ourselves to turn us into pod people? Anyway, we look at the stuff we got from one of the bodies from the New Mexico crash, and these beings, these uh, aliens, what have you, they're... They're us. Same genetic makeup. At least so far. The same could be said about the fruit fly. <laughs> Maybe that's the point.
What makes a man who he is? Is it the worst things he's ever done? Or the best things he wants to be? When you find yourself in the middle of your life and you're nowhere near where you were going, how do you find a way from the person you've become to the one you know you could have been? What did you do with my Cabbage Patch Kids? They're in one of the boxes, honey. Can you take them out of the boxes? They don't like being taken places in boxes. We'll unpack them when we get to our new place. Why can't I tell my friends where we're going? Ask your father. I want my dolls unpacked. Honey, we can't. Hello, thrill seekers. Uncle Chet. Hey, sweetheart, how you doing? Good. Where's your dad? In the study. Come on, come on. Come in. Dad, Mom wanna unpack my Cabbage Patch Kids. I'll talk to her about it, Mary, after I'm done with my meeting. Don't ever move. We got Jesse Keys in the clinic in Minnesota. That's the prize your dad could never get. What do you want to do with him? I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Well, while you're thinking, make sure you don't lose him. I don't want to make the same mistakes that my father made. Your old man's been dead, what, 10 years now? Yes. So don't you think he can stop trying to kick his ass? One of our researchers was going through some of the old files that came across these. Any idea what they are? They look like the glyphs from that excavation site in Alaska. The one where my brother died. Yeah, that's what I thought too, but uh, these are dated 1947 and that burial chamber in Alaska wasn't opened up until 1970. Did you translate it? Can't be done. <laughs> it's so close. We got Jesse Keys under wraps. And genetics guys are finding out more and more every day. My engineers tell me they're following something very cool on the implants. We're on the verge of a major breakthrough here. Hey, Eric? There's something we're not sharing. You know everything I know. <laughs> I know a hell of a lot more than you do, old pal of mine, but uh, what I was asking was as if it was something you weren't sharing. And what I told you was no. What are these? Tom Clark. You didn't see him on TV the other day, talking about the government conspiracy to cover up the presence of aliens here on Earth? Yeah, I don't like to watch TV during the day. It weirds me out. Hmm. Suddenly, he's the Woodward and Bernstein of alien abduction. Tom Clark, huh? The Tom Clark who ruined my father? The Tom Clark who thought our entire program was a lie? His first two books here do nothing but debunk everything about extraterrestrial life, about visits, about our work. Don't you want to know what changed his mind? You're much prettier than I expected. Your surveillance photographs don't do you justice. Is this visit about something more than my good looks? I understand that your brother has switched sides, that he's now a believer. Want to tell me what changed his mind? You and your brother have a way of sort of gumming up my family's work, so I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not doing this out of any compelling need to tell the truth. I just think it's the only method that'll work. There, I'm, I'm doing it already. 
Do you look a lot like your mother? People say I do. My father was a bastard. What he did to your mother was unforgivable. My father found a spaceship in the New Mexico desert. There were four bodies on that ship. There were spaces for five bodies. He came to your home looking for the guy who was sitting in that fifth seat. My father devoted the rest of his life to trying to find out what these visitors wanted. He ran a government group dedicated to that quest. Since his death, I've been in charge of that group. Technically, we're part of the Air Force, but the paperwork is so muddled I couldn't even tell you who I work for. This planet has been visited thousands of times since my father found that ship. People have been taken from their homes. Things have been done to them. A lot of money and a lot of very good minds were beginning to understand some things about our visitors, but we still don't know why they're doing all this. We don't know what they want. My father was a ruthless, ambitious son of a bitch, but the things he wanted to know were reasonable. This could be the greatest threat the world has ever known. This could be something miraculous. We have to know. We have to do whatever it takes to find out. I'm not my father. You don't have to tell me what changed your brother's mind right away. You could do something else instead. What? Let me show you something. I've been reading these reports from your genetics team. This is astounding stuff. Pretty cool, huh? Very. There's something new. These devices they put in people's heads, I told you, we're pretty sure they're a tracking system, right? They are. My guys have found the signal they give off. But the signal is incredibly weak. It needs to be amplified somehow before it can be transmitted back to the mothership or the planet Zeta Reticuli or wherever our little buddies are hanging out. You gotta love it. Transmitter? What? We don't know. But the logical assumption based on what we do know is that it's organic. Organic. Did you love it? A brain beaming thought signals out into the cosmos. This just keeps getting better and better. The energy of thought, of mind. <laughs> we know that's how they do things. We also know that Jesse Keys is of particular importance to them. You think Jesse Keys is a transmitter? That's why it's so special. It's one way to find out. Shut them off. See if they come and turn them back on. So are you going to be getting back to work soon? No, uh, there's a couple people starting up here in Texas I want to check out first. You sure are in a hurry to get rid of me. No, it's not that. ...influence the outcome of our country's presidential election by using these hostages for... Meatloaf's going to be ready about half an hour. Andy's got arithmetic homework that he has to finish before he watches Charlie's Angels. Your brother Tom's too high-toned to come to the door now he's been on TV. You gotta go outside to meet him. You haven't exactly been a prince to him every time he's been over here the last couple times. Why, is he still pissed I didn't go to your mom's funeral? I don't know, Ronnie. If you want to know why he's pissed, why don't you ask him? Why should I? Go on. There's no love lost between me and your old lady. All right, I'll ask him. I'll tell you when on a cold day in hell is when. I'll be home late. So unpack the cabbage patch, kids. What's the problem? All right, then, Julie, then don't unpack them. I might be late. Don't wait up. I don't know why I'm doing this. Curiosity. with you of all people. I could put you in custody. It's like that. No, it's not like that at all. I'll have you back by two in the morning. Spook's on it. <laughs> oh, he actually <laughs> said that? Aliens were responsible for teenage drug abuse and open marriages. 
and the success of the skateboard. You go up in Vegas and meet a lot of weirdos. I guess so. Uh, my family is eating leftover meatloaf. My wife's either called the Peking Inn or Pizza Hut. <laughs> I got married really young. First girl I slept with. First time I slept with her, she's pregnant, I'm married. Anything to show my father I was growing up. Yeah, I just needed my own identity. Some place where I wasn't Tom Clark's little sister. The brother of Shadow, I hear that. The sun rose and set on my brother Sam. I guess a lot of people do that. Hmm. They're just kids trying to get away from home. They wind up smack dab in the middle of their lives before they know what hit them. My kids are great. And I guess everything's got its upside. Let me put it to you this way. Your brother would be very jealous. We brought everything here from Wright Patterson in 76. It just made more sense to keep everything under one roof. sometimes by myself. I sit and just stare at him. I keep feeling like if I stare just a little longer, I'll be able to understand. Thank you for showing me this. I wasn't going to. People move through their lives sometimes without really thinking about where they're going. The days pile up and they get sadder and lonelier without really knowing why they're so sad or how they got so lonely. Then something happens. They meet someone who looks a certain way or has something in their smile. Maybe that's all that falling in love is. Finding someone who makes you feel a little less alone. Air Force sellouts write books, hit the talk show circuit. A couple of guys make movies. Carter says he saw a UFO. Next thing you know, I've got a crowd. You and your brother didn't help. Where are you gonna go? I got a spot picked out in Maine. The Cockers will still come to the desert. They'll see the same experimental planes and think they're seeing the saucers and we can continue our work undisturbed. When are you leaving? Tomorrow night. Babe. 
packing. Come with me. I... I didn't, I didn't mean for this to happen. I, I meant to charm you with my honesty and find out all I could about your brother. But that's not how it worked out. I, I don't want to be the man that I am. But with you, I'm somebody else. I'm who I want to be. Eric, we can't. I want to be with you. What is so terribly wrong about that? Nothing's wrong with it. It's just not possible. Of course it is. I'm going to tell Julie about us. Come with me. Leave Ronnie and come with me. Maine? The trucks are leaving Grim Lake tomorrow night, sneaking out across the desert to avoid your brother and his friends by the mailbox. What is it? Your work. When Tom says you've been taking people and experimenting on them, he says some of those people have died. Becky, I swear to you that your brother's wrong. I have never done anything to harm anyone. Will you leave Ronnie? You're sleeping with him? It's not as simple as that, Tom. Oh. Okay. Uh, everything's okay, then. He's leaving his wife, and he wants me to leave Ronnie. He wants us to stop interfering in his business, Becky. Eric Crawford. Owen Crawford's son. The son of the man who ruined your mother's life. How could you do that? He's not his father. He's covering up the biggest secret in American history. He's lying to the entire public on a regular basis. What in the hell makes you think that he's not lying to you? You don't respect anything at all, do you? You're just a selfish little girl who married the wrong guy, and you're willing to walk on anyone's grave you have to to get away from him. This is not about me and Eric. This is about what Owen did to Mom. No, it's not. Not anymore. It's about blowing the lid on this thing wide open. How could something this huge have happened and the whole world doesn't know about it? That's wrong, Becky. Did you tell him about Jacob? No. You don't trust him either. Well, you're making short work of that book. Not a lot to do around here, you know. What is it? Well, your deposits are not disintegrating as quickly as I had hoped. This is Dr. Patterson from the Brazil Clinic. Does this look anything like a national helmet? Ah, it looks perfect. I wish Dad was here. He's good at making things like this. Yeah, he is.
Hello? Hey, big guy. Oh, hey, Dad. Mom, it's Dad. Are you going to be able to come to my play? Well, I'm sure going to try. How was Halloween? Alan Holmes called you crazy, so I punched him. And then uh, some guy pulled me off and I was going to punch him again. But he wanted me to go to the Lemon Keys house because they had a haunted house there. Oh, it was so cool. Can you come to my play? I hope so. Hey, can I uh, talk to mom for a sec? Okay, just a sec. It's for you. Hi, honey. Hey, um... They're moving me. Uh, this thing in my head isn't going away. And, um... There's a new doctor. And, uh, they're gonna take me someplace called the Brazza Clinic and see what they can do for me. Okay. Uh, I love you. Love you too. Yeah. I sure hope well, Dad's all right. Maybe I shouldn't have told him about how I got into a fight with Alan Holmes. I don't want him to worry about me. Mom? Mom, what's wrong? Big country. Yeah. We'll take care of that thing in your head. Once it's gone, no more little gray man. I'm ready. That's good. How'd you uh, know the little men were gray? Educated guess. small step for mankind, I mean, yeah, man, one giant leap for mankind. The, the giant leap that Neil Armstrong was talking about was a leap into outer space for him and his Apollo team. They started the journey, but it'll be up to us to continue it. I can't believe you came. Are you all better? Yeah. Did you like my play? I loved it. It was pretty cool, wasn't it? Pretty cool. Dad, what are those lights? Why are we stopping here? Dad? Dad? What's going on? Dad? Charlie, come over here. Dad, what's happening? It's not your father, Charlie. Don't listen to him, Charlie. Charlie, it's me. It's okay. He isn't me, Charlie. He's making me from the picture in your head. He's lying. Charlie, he's not your dad. Watch, I'll change the picture. Remember last month I caught myself shaving? And, and I came downstairs and I had blood on my chin. Charlie, Charlie, do you remember? You're not going to take him. Leave my boy alone. You're not going to take him. Charlie, get away from me. Dad! Get away from my boy! It wasn't a stroke or a seizure. Could this have been caused by the tumor? I don't know. 
The nearest I can come to it is like someone held his brain too close to a magnet. Mom? Just... Jess. You give me a towel, please. What's happening to him? They'll come for Charlie next. You gotta go. I've called for help. Let's see what's taking them. Wait a minute. Who did you call? Help. makes you think that he's not lying to you. Eric Crawford. Owen Crawford's son. The son of the man who ruined your mother's life. How could you do that? Did you tell him about Jacob? No. You don't trust him either. little girl who married the wrong guy and you're willing to walk on anyone's grave you have to to get away from him. You live your life step by step. You're doing what you do. Suddenly you look up and, and you're this person you didn't plan to be. But with you, I'm somebody else. What is so terribly wrong about that? Nothing's wrong with it. It's just not possible. Sometimes people come to a moment where they think they found that one last chance to be someone else and they go for it. When it doesn't work out, they spend the rest of their lives looking back over their shoulder at what might have been. Let's go.
Perfect. How are you going to get through the crowd at the gate? Three trucks come out, get the crowd's attention, then take off through the desert. When we're sure they're being chased, then the real trucks will leave. Hmm. Yes, sir. You think it'll work? We'll see. Yes, you okay? You seem kind of down. Well, I'll just say goodbye, I guess. We're doing the right thing. The tourists can still come out and watch the stealths, and we'll all live happily ever after. You went out and got your little heart broken, didn't you? <laughs> I never met my grandfather, but my father told me that he was a very brave man. And with all that he'd done, or maybe because of all he'd done, his favorite thing in all the world was to mow the lawn. My dad said he heard his father talking to a neighbor once. The neighbor asked him how he was and what he'd been doing. And my grandfather said, I've been cutting the grass and watching it grow. Cutting the grass and watching it grow. Life, he said, is 90% maintenance. Drinks are here. Honey, we're gonna be moving around for a little while. Kinda like the Duke's Hazard? Yeah, kinda like. Is this because of what happened to Dad? Oh, there's some people who wanna talk to us and I don't wanna talk to them. They're not people. It, it doesn't matter, sweetheart. They're not gonna find us again. Sometimes, when bad things are happening, we imagine things. Oh, maybe we, we think the things we make up can't hurt us as much as the real things that are actually happening. Even if what we make up is scary, too. Does that make any sense? Is that ever gonna be all right? I don't know. I really don't know. This isn't fair. There's nothing fair about this! No, there's not. This song got me through my freshman year of college. Just in several plans we need never discuss. Your father always hated this music. Anything that was popular while he was away. You know, it wasn't so much the war as Oh, he was just supposed to come back and act like nothing ever happened. I know none of this makes any sense to you right now. You just have to know that your daddy loves you. Hey, dance with me. Come on, come on, come on, come on, get up. Come on. Let's just dance for a while, okay?
your side on. There you We'd like to take a look in the back of your truck, please. That would be a violation of about three dozen Army and Air Force regulations. Well, we believe that you're in violation of a lot more than that. We believe that you're carrying the wreckage of a spacecraft that crashed in the New Mexico desert in 1947. What kind of evidence? We believe that you recovered bodies from that wreckage and that you're transporting them. Bodies? Where would you have gotten an idea like that? Can we take a look at your cargo, please? In the interest of fairness, full disclosure, and you not wasting any more of my time, absolutely. I was going to paint a big old happy face on the inside here and write the word howdy. But I just didn't get around to it. Just so you know, my heart was in the right place. Tom, ask him what's in those crates. Personal effects, things that belong to my father. Well, we'd like to take a look. I'm afraid I can't have you snooping through my father's affairs. You and your friends here will be driven to Las Vegas, held for 72 hours, and then released. Detained with what cause? You were detained for interfering with a scheduled move of Air Force personnel. When we determined you weren't spies, we let you go. Bastard. What did you expect me to do? You wouldn't let me be someone else. Look. Look! something like this up. As long as I have to. 